you played Mark Matson's team at San Ramon Valley High, I mean, on numerous occasions. So he was always defending Mark Matson, who was a pretty bulky guy. Yeah. What, what did you tell him? Bob was a year older. Bob was better than Mark in high school. Uh, you know, the, the, he, he, he did fine against Mark. Mark really developed late. He didn't even play basketball until he was a sophomore. And um, so when Bob was a senior and Mark was a junior, Bob was still better than Mark. And I would think that Bob was a better shooter. Well, Bob was a better Mark, shooter. <laughs> Which is a low bar, to... Jim. <laughs> it's not a high, a high bar to get over. The, the saddest thing about the, the Mark element to all this is he came to Monta Vista yeah. for a week, okay? Yes. Nobody knew it. He was he here enrolled at Monta Vista, teammates. yes. All of his sisters and brothers had there gone. There goes the there. state championship. Oh. I'm, I'm not, that's, that's the, I believe that's the truth. Yeah. If I could have played with him, if we could have had him on our team. If I would have known he was walking our campuses, How'd you let him I would have away? introduced him. We never him knew. We never knew he, he was played here. basketball. His parents sat behind us at every game, Erlene and Dwayne, yeah. wonderful people. Yeah. They'd yeah. sit right behind us. And all their kids had gone to Monta Vista. But Mark had gone to Charlottewood Middle School and the majority of his friends went, oh, I'm over this, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then you found out, well, I didn't know that till he was a sophomore in high school and he started at San Ramon. We go, where did this kid come from? Then we heard, oh my God, I feel like, you know, I failed as a recruiter. Yeah, I blame, it's his fault. Yeah. I just remember watching Bob playing against him and he could turn baseline, he could turn baseline and make the shot almost every time. And I remember seeing that, I'm like, how does he do that? Because in high school, all I could really do was drop step. And I said, how does Bob make that shot every time? And then uh, we played a lot together. He came back from UCLA. Um, he'd been there a couple years, we played, and he, he was always great at giving pointers and kind of giving me feedback on my game. You do it and it's very rewarding for you to see others that you have trained, you have coached, you have mentored, turn into men who are, are good for society. Well, like Bill and I were talking about, Bill and I, we both grew up here in the Bay Area. We've always been Warrior fans. I mean, we've been huge Warrior fans. And, uh, you know, we're so excited as Warrior fans, like this area is, that the ownership group that we have now, that with a guy like Bob in place, not putting pressure on Bob, but the coach that we have, that we're gonna have something, because this area, as you know, Jim, you've been here when it's good and bad. And uh, it's, we're ready to explode. We, and when this happens, it's gonna be really, really cool. Right, right? I mean, Coach? Oh yeah, no question. We were so proud of Bob here at Monta Vista and to be a Mustang and you know, what that means and what it represents. And you know, he's part of the Warriors, but he's also, you know, a little bit of us. Time. And uh, you know, just how he has, well, what he's done for himself, he's gonna have the ability to do for the organization. You know, probably the Warriors in many ways, at least in the recent times, are similar to sort of how Bob was, you know, undersized, smaller, you know, what, and, and then just through effort. And I think the other thing that he had said that has to be stated is about his humility. You know, he's talking about himself. He's a Division I player, played at UCLA, and in a championship team, and he talks in, in, you know, in language like, well, I didn't know that I was good enough, or, well, that's the key, is to just, if you never think you're good enough. And for, as the current coach, and with players that, you know, have aspirations of being better and improving, I mean, Bob is, is, a, is a great asset for them to look at, and his story will be greater now since he's, you know, uh, harder when you're down south and, you know, working in the industry that he was working. Now as a Warriors, the you know, front office man, I think, uh, you know, they're going to see what, what the, the true Bob Myers. Yeah, perfectly said. He, he's an inspiration to all students and athletes and, and coaches, everyone, and coaches uh, connected here at Monta Vista High. And, and it's, uh, that's a big burden for you, you know. You know, it, it, on the theme of um, we talked about improving and getting better, I, I've, I've had to a couple times speak to some kids at camps and things like that, and I told them, my goal wasn't ever to be the most valuable player. If that happened, that's great. And Because I, I, I believe you could be the most valuable player just through talent alone. You, you, there's some very talented basketball players out there that can be the best player on their team. My goal every year was to win the most improved player because I thought that's not an award that you can just walk into. You have to start somewhere and then move on from that and get better each and every day. When I graduated from UCLA, we had an awards banquet and they announced the John Wooden Award with our team, within our team. Which if you look at who has won the John Wooden Award, 
it's some major people. <laughs> of course. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, real people, so, yes. real basketball yeah. players. And um, like the Bill Waltons, like the Bill Waltons of the world. Yeah. And, and this is the John Wooden Award that was given out to our team, not the John Wooden Award for the That's nationwide. It. So it was for our team. And I remember um, at that banquet, uh, they begin announcing it, and they said Charles O'Bannon, and, and they said, uh, and this year we're, we're not just going to give it to one person. And then they said Cameron Dollar. And I said, well, these Cameron Dollar helped us win a national championship, and Charles O'Bannon is Charles O'Bannon, great high school player, great college. And they said Ann Bob Myers. And I said, wait, because I wasn't really paying attention at that award because I knew I wasn't a candidate for that award. And I, 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 I to this day, was a John Wooden Award winner for that team. And I certainly was not the most valuable player on that team on the court, but I may have been valuable through my work ethic, through showing that a guy can walk on at UCLA, just be excited to be donning a UCLA uniform, to be so excited that I didn't even tell anybody because I didn't think it was real. Um, to get to be excited just to be on the traveling part of the team, to, to feel like maybe one day I'll get in a game, to then feel like maybe one day I'll contribute, to then feel like maybe one day I'll start, and, I'll, and see all those things happen. Um, was, um, it was a good culmination to win an award like that, to show that you can start somewhere so low and obtain a, a level that is reserved for the highest caliber player at a university that's won more national championships than any in the country. Bob, as you return to uh, Monta Vista High, what do you feel like and what, is there some sense of home when you come back yeah, here? Absolutely, because um, this is the gym. This is where it was. I, it's not, not much has been done to change it. Um, I think it's a better floor than when I was here. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, it was a little slippery <laughs> when I was here. but. Uh, Wow, it, it does, and it's, it's a palpable thing. You can actually feel it when you walk in, and it's a, it's, it's a, it is like going home. It's like going to somewhere you feel comfortable. Is there some moment from a high school game coached by Jeff here that you remember that sticks out the most? Oh, man, you know what? There's not one moment, and I'll explain why, because there were so many good moments. Because every time I, I, I enjoyed practice as much as I enjoyed playing the games. And so when I left, here, when I, left, when I left here, my last game wasn't in this gym. We lost in the playoffs to Mark Madsen. And I saw Mark Madsen last week, and I still talked to him. He hit the game-winning shot over me in a game where we thought we'd won. It was a brutal deal, a bad way to end your high school career. So I thought that was my last game ever of organized basketball. I had no idea I'd go on to play at UCLA. So I remember people asking me, you know, it was really bad. I mean, I'm not. I'm probably understating how difficult that loss was. You are, and and, and he was there too. And and Madsen, he was joking with me. I saw him last week. It was a huge moment for him. I mean, it was just we were and we're we're good friends. Well, you you were rivals all that time. Yeah, rivals. Road, and and uh, yeah, it was. It could. If anybody was going to beat me, I'm glad it was him or beat us, beat our team, because I love the guy. He's a great guy. But I thought at that time that was it, and that was my last game. And people would say. That must be terrible to have ended your organized basketball career like that. And I said, in some ways, yeah. I said, but it's not like I blew out my knee. I can play basketball again. I can go out to play playground right now and play. Yeah. And so the same thing at UCLA, when I finished playing at UCLA, do you miss playing at UCLA, all the crowds? I said, yeah, partly, but I can still go play basketball. And that's what I love about the game of basketball. It, 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 for me, it wasn't necessarily the crowd. It wasn't the notoriety. It wasn't. It was the guys on the court with you fighting the fight that night or the team that you were with in that scrimmage, in that drill, competing together, competing against people. So for me, it's the whole experience. It wasn't one game because I, I, I have moments where practice was the most enjoyable time I had that week. It wasn't winning the game. It was being in the, in the heat of the moment with, with, with my teammates and getting better as a team. Wouldn't you like to play with a guy like that? I mean, isn't that, doesn't that sound perfect? Well, in my era, we played with a lot of guys like that. That's what, what a privilege, you're exactly right. No, team, he was, to me, when I hear that, he was a team player.